once again welcome back to studio with africa if you just tuned then good you for on those studios uh on saturday it was a children's day of course we have a special celebrating children's day here mm -hmm. in nigeria there's a lot of match pass and all that i remember when i was a kid i, I really did that a lot <laughs> but, you know, i never won, won a medal uh nonetheless this morning we'll be celebrating children and try to understand the uniqueness of a child now every child is an individual with special social emotional and intellectual physical qualities and this morning we have a child at the house to talk to us about the various uniqueness of children person of joshua rather joseph kwabula welcome on daybreak africa joseph thank you for joining us thank you morning. so very much <laughs> it's nice to have me here thank you thank you same here well going straight to the discourse of the day i would first of all like you to just in few sentences how would you describe a child and also where do, does this uniqueness come from okay thank you so very much like i said it's uh, awesome to be in your studio here today and you know whenever i have the opportunity of talking about children especially the african child it gives me pleasure because you know each and every one of us before we get to this stage we were once children of and getting to this stage and looking back we can now feel we can have a feeling of what the children are going through we can have a feeling of what the children should go through so i will first of all say it, a child i love defining the term child because it's actually an acronym okay. it's actually an acronym that means it means carefully her nursing or carefully her nursed that is from the c, c. then the h is say her nursed then you have the i the idea is serving the purpose of you know um like i said you instruct them that's instructing the child instructing the child leading the child and then developing the child so simply put i would say carefully harnessed instruct lead and develop that's the way i put it that's from where the word child come from mm. what this means is that a child is very unique having some uh, some kind of uh, and delegates at the same time which means a child should be carefully taken care of so as to bring out their potential you need to bring out their potential why you are doing that you must not forget their basic needs because they have needs being it socially, psychologically, spiritually, and emotionally. You must put these needs into consideration. You understand? Mm -hmm. So a child is delicate, like I mentioned earlier, and needs all this to be trained and to be put in the right perspective so as to function maximally in the society. Thank you. I'm quite curious as to uh, child's personality. Now, um, it's more like... Um, it, it the belief of say uh, a child personality is fully formed when the child is in a elementary stage how true is this uh, thought yeah you know <laughs> i tell people that child that um that one day old child is as human is as human as a 70 year old man but some things about the child needs to be developed it's just like um someone who told he told he told his friend he said uh please i have a i have a car and then the person was like okay come and show me the car so the guy came and then picked up uh, his car particulars and showed the friend that okay i have a car that's actually a proof that he has a car but can he drive that car because the car is not there that means the reality is not there there is a difference between reality and fact now when a child was born when was the child was born the fact is that the child is as human as the 70 year old man but there is a reality into it which comes with the aspect of modeling we need to model the child 
we need to develop the child. We need to instruct the child. Now, looking at their elementary stage, when a child in the uh, lifetime of a child, we talk about, we talk about the, um, the submissive stage of a child. That's from the early stage. You know, at that point, um, Emmanuel, come here. The child just moves to you. Emmanuel, go there. Go and bring that cane. Let me flog you. They move. Then the child is moving. The child gets to a point. Basically, this happened between the ages of four up. The child gets to a point that when you tell the child, come here, the child will grumble. Mm, mommy. Yeah. yeah, the child is beginning to develop. Is beginning to develop the child is beginning to have some kind of mind of a, a, a kind of let me say a mind of his own gradually because the child wants to go and play with friends now you are calling the child to come so the child will have to give you some kind of attitude then at that point you still have control over that child although but that child is no longer at the submissive stage the submissive stage is from zero to three once they get to four they start having a mind of their own now they know the type of play they want to do and that is the area that is a time and season of their life that they need to be thoroughly controlled because that is when they make the worst mistakes of their lives they form things at that level anything they come in contact with at that stage their life is like the baby sponge if you put it in the red oil you bring it out you squeeze it what you will see coming out is red oil when you squeeze it very well and then you put it let's say it um uh what's it called petrol if you bring it out and you squeeze it it's petrol that will come out at that point you need to be careful who stays with your child who your child plays with where your child goes with school what are they teaching the child you need to know all these things the child needs to be more there at that point so if i get your question right if i get your question right that very stage is very important in the life of a child because the child needs to trans uh, transit from there into a young teenager what they call preteen so that very stage is very important i'm talking about the age four up to the age eight is very important in the life of a child and we must make sure we take care of them at that point and we guide them right at that point anything any habit they develop at that point tends to move with them that is when children pick bad habits or let's say picking things that are not theirs if you can control them at that point then you are on a good track well i'll let you know as a parent or one who is training a child how do you begin to identify a uniqueness in that child? Okay, thank and, you. You know, because as a parent, it's your duty to lead the child in right. the right direction, yes. as well as also knowing what that's uh, some of the you know qualities in the child that is special in order for uh, easy movement <laughs> or easy, easy transition. Uh, exactly, transition yeah. of this child from one stage to another. Yeah. So okay now the first thing as a parent or a guardian the first thing we encourage parents to try to know is that you need to like we said the child is unique you need to try to study your child or if you like to put it under study you need to study your child to know the kind of things the child loves playing with it's very important because the type of play a child is fascinated at we begin to tell you what direction this child wants to go now let me quickly chip this in this is uh, the area where a lot of us or a lot of parents get it wrong and then they end up guiding and directing children to the wrong path first like i said the first point you were the one in charge you were totally in control but now the child is beginning to pick a mind of his or her own. Now what are you supposed to do? Give the child some observations. Watch the child. Watch the child. You ask the child, 
read. You force the child to go and sit down. The child sit down. The child is reading. Try to leave the child. Go behind and try to watch the child. You need to see the way because from there you will know a child that loves reading. Immediately they come back from school. You will know a child that wants to rest first before he or she will read and understand. You know a child that just want to read by um how, how would I put it down? A child that want to read by identification. Okay, there are some children they read by identification. Mm -hmm. Then there are some children <clears throat> that they read better when no one is around them. Okay, no one is around them, they will read. But the moment they see you, you become a threat. You become a threat to them. Mm -hmm. Some, when they are when you are around them, they are afraid of making me or let me say they are careful. Let me use the word afraid. They are careful of making mistakes especially when you are a parent that shouts which is another thing that we are still going to come uh, into when you are a parent that doesn't know how to control or how to instruct a child you know they say the parents are the first teachers of a child but then it's not every parent that's a teacher we must get it right because some parents the child can only pick from them by observation if it is by teaching it will not work because they don't have the this thing. Permit me to chip this in. Now, why growing up, my dad, you know, <laughs> being a military man, so whenever we're at home, maybe we just get back from school and we meet our mom at home. Everyone is happy. Everyone is jumping around. You know, everyone. Is. But we knew the minutes our dad leaves his office. I'm not talking about the minute he gets home. Mm -hmm. When he leaves, our spirit will tell us that our dad is about coming. So, at that moment, everyone is careful. And let me tell you, everything we did by that very hour, it was not us that were doing it. We're not the ones. What do I mean by that? We were trying to wear another character that was not our own. So as to avoid discipline. Because if he comes and he meets you, you are doing what you are not supposed to. Now, I will pick a book. Let me use myself and uh, my other brother. We will pick a book and we'll be looking into the book. Just walk up to us and ask us, what is in the chapter of that book? We don't know. But if you walk into the room, we, you will look at us. We are looking so studious. Is it like? <laughs> we are not. What we are doing is that we are using a cover-up. You understand? But when we are with our mom, oh... At that time we operate at our best that's when you see us we do our assignment you know we can even go and ask her mommy what's this what's this one you know she puts us through but we did not ask such questions from our dad until the man even graduated to giving us a passage that you have to read before you eat you understand <laughs> so you know i used to tell people at the age nine years i could read very fluent <clears throat> without issues courtesy of my dad mm. it was not it was it was not out of passion okay it was not out of passion <laughs> it was <laughs> it was out of discipline you know so somehow i was wearing another character when my dad is around i have a different character when my mom is around i have a different character mm. you understand but i found that as i grew up that is a character i wear when whenever i was with my mom that i end up growing with you understand that gives you the place that gives the place of the true character of a child the ones i was doing when my dad was there that wasn't me so the ones i developed when my for instance my mom would just call me just said come so i'll come he said what do you want to go and do now i said hey, mom i want to go and meet uh he said okay well, that's fine but have you done your homework? You know, I'll be like, no, mom. He said, okay, do your homework before you go and play with them. Now, there is an incentive. There is an incentive. The incentive is you will go and play. Mm. Hmm? There is a job to be fulfilled. Mm. The job is do your assignment. 
so with the incentive oh i'll do my assignment with all enthusiasm i'll be doing it and jumping you understand that way my mom was able to find out who i truly was you understand unlike my dad my dad didn't know me but my mom got to know me because she gave me the attention Although she it, didn't, it didn't change the fact that he still one way or the other exactly. through discipline worked i mean for you to be able to read fluently oh yes oh yes it worked it worked but another thing it also put in me was the fact that um whenever you talk of kenny me okay whenever you talk of kenny me it was actually a time for me to show my strength okay because how would you use a cane to threaten a child who is being flogged with a military belt no that was a play you understand so it didn't really bring out the best of me rather it put in me something that was not only a discomfort to me but also a discomfort to my immediate society so from what you've said so far are you trying to say that um parents should adapt a particular you know a method of bringing up their children okay like i mentioned earlier these guys are peculiar okay so you need as a parent to study them to get out the peculiarity of their character you understand once you know it it's very easy to deal with them i tell people children are the most easiest people to deal with they are the most easiest people for people that know me they will tell you wherever i get to for example just give me just just give me five minutes with children i mean hundred children all of them will be playing with me all of them and the moment they are doing something that is wrong if i turn to them and say stop all of them will stop how it's about knowing who a child is know who a child is these guys the first thing you must recognize about them is that they're innocent everything they do a child accepts and unless if the child is growing up in an environment that is corrupt if not a child is innocent so when they are doing something and you caution them this where a lot of people make mistakes is that they believe getting harsh with the children is the best no it's not it's not many people don't know you can advise a child children listen to advice just call a child tell the child i'll see um this is it okay don't do it if you do this this is the repercussion of this thing that you are doing if you do this one this is do you want always ask them do you want to end up like this did you want this one do you want this one to happen do you understand the more you put the child will tell you no i find at times training children in schools and in communities i'll tell a child i'll say now do you want to end up in the garage i use this uh, illustration a lot that's why i'm using it i say do you want to end up in the garage as a tout or do you want to end up as a lawyer you know another some of them will say no master i don't want to be a lawyer i want to be a doctor i want to be i say wow you want to be a doctor are you sure do you know that for you to be a doctor it requires hard work do you know that for you to be a lawyer it requires hard work plain is your right but you must make sure you know how to use your right because actually playing is their right they must have their times of play but also guide them maybe i should chip this in i tell people in your house drop a calendar drop a calendar the child has a time he or she leaves for school when they come back from that time they have the first thing let them take their shower let them take their snacks let them rest don't begin to push the child there are some that when you say go and sleep you come back and do your assignment they will tell you no leave him or her let him go and do it i don't know whether you've heard this that some people read at night some people read 
in the afternoon. Some people read when where it is noisy. Mm. Some people. This is how you'll be able to bring out this and know exactly who this person, who this child uh, is. Personally, I think the greatest challenge for <coughs> parents uh, is the inability to actually understand their word, especially when they are at their teens, you know, teenagers, like at that moment they attack rebels and all that. that I wonder how, how, how do parents actually embrace the uniqueness of their children when they are uh, yet teenagers? You know, at that point, that is where I uh, say choices. choices, choices you would not be comfortable with. Exactly. You know, that's, that's the point where your male child will tell you, I prefer dressing like a woman. I want to be a mm. drag queen. And, you know, the, the tendency is always to maybe, uh, this was bully the foolishness out of them or spank, <laughs> spank the devil <laughs> out of them. Or uh, for a religious, mm. so you could be taking them for uh, a spiritual exorcism or, or some sort. <laughs> Now, I tend to wonder how, how best would you advise parents to really handle or embrace so, um, that uniqueness? Situation. Okay. Now, um, the first thing is there are two things. When it comes to education, for instance, I tell people there's a difference between proper and right education. <laughs> Most times people wonder when I thought, yes, but there's a difference between proper and right education. Let's look at it this way. When you say a child is being given proper education, that means the child is in a good school, okay, where the teachers are of standard, everything, you know, making sure that the child has all the study materials and all that. Oh, yes, that is proper education. But there's something also called the right education. Talking about right education, it means you need to know you need to know what are the things that this child is being exposed to as a parent and a guardian no don't just abandon a child in the hands of caregivers no teachers are caregivers and if you look at the society we are living in presently you know you did mention the issue of a, an african parent mm. now if you look at the children that we have now let me just put it between 1999 to date and the children we have 1999 back then they are not growing up the same the level of their choice making is different is different why <laughs> because look at the child the child leaves um, the house by seven Hmm? At time 6.30, okay, gets to school. After the normal study hours, let's say 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, the child is enrolled into lesson. Okay, now, most of the schools, I can tell you, that those lesson hours, there's nothing really special that they teach the children. It's to help them do the assignment that they've given them, and then maybe lead them in one, 30 minutes class or so and then left the children then they leave the children these children are on their own playing with their pairs this is where the challenge come from these pairs they are playing with have different backgrounds the environment that one is coming from is different from the environment this one is coming from but as they come together they tend to like they, they tend to influence each other mm. they influence each other now the child picks up something there the teachers on the other hand the type of attitude characters they display in front of the children for instance a child pick up uh, uh, what's it called this uh, okay. na this nail paint okay. Okay. she was doing it then she put her, she crossed her leg, wasn't it? So the mom was shocked. When did my daughter of six years old start crossing her leg and painting her? Say, Jemima, what is this? Say, that is how my mistress used to do during lesson time. I went to a school. As I was just getting to the school, the proprietress was like, Thank God, Mr. Joseph, you are here. 
two young children were standing. The other one, 11. The other one, 8. What happened? They were engaged in a, a very, I don't want to, but an awesome act. Okay? What happened? The other one was male, was a male child. The other one, a female child. They sat down. So because the teacher was busy doing her own things, chatting on the phone and laughing aloud, the children were busy doing what they were doing. The other one sat down, faced the other one, opened her legs. You know? The other one was using his pen to touch the other one, mm. her private part. She said that is how they are. And funny enough, they were siblings. They said that's what the gate man used to come and do with their uh, nanny whenever their parents are not around. They would do it in the class. Remember I told you these guys are innocent. Mm. They don't know the meaning of this thing. They were just doing it. Now according to research, according to research, between the year 2000 to date, about 60% of girls got this virgin through unnatural process. How did we get there? Through these things. Now, someone coming from um, someone coming from a background that is not right, get mingled with your child. Now, what do you do as a parent? I also tell parents, where they come in here, as a parent, be friendly with your child. Let your child be your friend. What do I mean by that? When your child gets back from school, as a mother, after all the movement around and everything, maybe you are a, a civil servant or so, you go to work and you don't come back on time. Okay, Mary, come and sit down. How was school today? You know, begin to talk to her. Mary, do you have a friend? How many, how many friends that are boys do you have? You know, with a smiley face. These guys are innocent. They will open up to you. They will tell you. Once they tell you, what are you supposed to do as a parent? Begin to guide them. Begin to tell them. They cannot play to play with a male friend. They cannot play to play with a female friend. The kind of things that once a friend begins to do, you begin to suspect that friend. You know, if you put them through this, if you put them through this, they will have a smooth transition. They will have a smooth transition. But what happens is that most of the times, parents are disciplinarians. So, once you are not their friend, they can't open up to you. They can't talk to you. At times I get to schools, something that happened several months ago, the child will open up to me and be telling me why the child had a teacher. How come the child never spoke to the teacher? Because the child couldn't confide in the teacher. The friendship wasn't there. When you are talking to children, they notice the friendship attitude the moment you start talking to them. When you talk to a child, the child will notice whether this one is somebody I can talk to or this one is somebody I cannot talk to. So it's very simple. It's about monitoring, giving them the right education. Not just proper education. Mm. You must combine the two. Right and proper education. They must go together. Know the kind of things they are exposed to. The type of materials they read. The type of things. We are we're in the world of internet. You know, at times you have to give them your device. Or, you know, they even have to. They might need to have their own device. Mm. Now, we have some things we call parental uh, control and all those stuff. Parental guide. Go through all these things. By the time you, and most importantly, talk to your words. It's very important. Talk to them. And you will get everything you need to get out of them. And that will help them have a smooth transition. If they grow up with their parents or a guidance as a friend, they are better off. I think to wonder from your words, I mean, uh, uh, what then is the most important influence on a child's development? Because at this point, I'm not sure which is important than the other, which is even better. Because at this point, you made uh, a sample of the peers, you know, bringing in their various uh, understanding and their 
experience from various homes, which might not be the best. Uh, to some extent, parents on their part are not exactly always there for the awards, you know, it's Nigeria, all parents are out there working and, <laughs> and all that, and they have little to no time for, for, their, for their awards. So at this point, uh, what then is the most important influence on the child's development? When you talk of most important, let's look at it this way. The pairs, okay? The pairs, the caregivers, these two set of people, they are the inputs. I want you to get this. The parents and the teachers are the input. The parents and the guardians are the savers. Once your child leaves you, different inputs will come to the child. Now, it's important. You instill in them some kind of fetus. You understand? Instilling to them some kind of fetus. When I talk about fetus, I'm talking about ideas that will make them quickly discern what is right mm -hmm. and what is wrong. That's the best way to help them. You understand? Because once they get there, it's like dropping a sheep before a wolf. You understand? So what you do is that any opportunity you have to stay with your child, and you must give them that, that uh, time. Always make sure you create time. Parents should create time to stay with their children. They should try. No matter how busy. See, you cannot go out there catering for their, um, let's say, shelter, clothing, food, and health. And then you will neglect. These ones that we tend to look at as abstracts, talking about the, the, the emotional, the psychological and the spiritual needs because they have them remember i told you a day old child is as human as a 70 year old these things these things are inherent they born us with these things the way if someone should neglect you you will feel that's the same way they feel they might not have a way of expressing it but something is missing something is missing they will feel it they will feel that's the reason why i don't know if you have noticed this a female child that grew up with the father in the absence of the mother tend to behave in a way like a guy have you noticed it where you might not i have <laughs> and a male child that grew up with a mother in the absence of the father tend to pick some elements of the female Yes, because that was his or her role model. They pick a lot from the parents and the guardian. You understand? So, the most important is supposed to be. Now, this is very important. You know, um, in economics, there's something we talk about what is and what ought to be. You know, what ought to be is usually not the reality. What ought to be is that the parents should be the cogent influence in the lives of their child. Okay? In the life of their child. That's what ought to be. But like you mentioned, in Nigerian society, everybody needs to hustle. Everybody needs to go there, you know? Yeah. Just, just imagine, in Lagos, for instance, a father has to leave the house by 4 a.m. and is getting back by 11. The child is already asleep you know now in such a case what happened the father or the the parent has a responsibility the basic thing they would do is to make sure every opportunity they have to sit with this child it should not be a time of discipline i am not saying discipline is bad no that's not what i'm saying but even that discipline we have different kind of discipline okay but instilling in them you have to instill in them some kind of fetus that whenever this thing comes and you know you spoke about taking them to religious uh, this and that you know hmm, it is so beautiful it is so beautiful but at times 
can be risky. Yes, because as an adult, you go to a church, okay? You go to a mosque. You go to wherever you go to. Another question that pops up in your mind is that, are they, are they telling me the right thing? If you as an adult, you are wondering if they are telling you the right thing, and you now expose a child that cannot fit her, and you leave the child without guidance, what do you think will happen? Anything the child picks, the child goes with. That way. So do you see where even if you want to follow the religious line, fitters are still important. So the most important thing is for parents to identify the fact that they are the fitter developers. Why the parents and the caregivers are the imputes in the life of the child. That will make the parents know that, okay, I need to try to monitor the kind of people that my child stay with. You understand? The type of school, the kind of things that have been taught in that school, you know, right education mm. is coming into place again. You know, from time to time, I tell parents, go to the schools, ask them what they are teaching your child. In this time, in this uh, time and era that they will say, children, drop your books in school. Children are learning terrible things in schools that they won't even say anything about. Some of them, they even tell them, don't talk about it. Okay? For instance, in some schools now, they tell them they, they've stopped using gender in a way of differentiating them. They will not use gender. They just address them. You know, <laughs> in particular school, I was watching the, this and that. Then the lady said, if you are putting on skirt, come this way. If you are putting on trousers, come this way. So that means, as a male child, if I'm putting on skirts, I can go this way. As a female child, if I'm putting on trousers, I can come this way. Do you see? So as a parent, you need to come in. So, parents, in this time that we are, might not have so much of impute in the life of the child. The best they can do is to give the children fetus. I always emphasize on that. Give them the right training so that they can identify these things and stay out of them. Well, when you talk about um, bringing up a child uh, or studying a child as it is, uh, documentation comes into place. So I would like you to explain to us how important documenting the process of the child is. Yeah, like, like you said, documentation comes in. Now, why why do we why why do we document it why do we why do we keep documents when you keep a document or when you keep documents or you keep sequence of events the first thing that you you are trying to uh, get out from there is you're trying to get the frequency of a particular action or a particular incident okay how often does, does this one happen you understand you know if you look at the whole series, it's still channeling to the same thing because you are trying to know this, uh, this guy mm -hmm. that God has given you to take care of. Okay, so you need to, you need to keep inventory. Okay, you need to keep inventory of the child's development, their movement. You need to know when this person was like this. Okay, I was like, that will guide you. It will guide your, um, your mode of interaction with the child. It will inform your decisions for the child. Because a time is coming that you need to take decisions for that child. Mm. You know, talking about um, what, to, uh, what to study and all those things. Mm. You know, you don't really need to tell a child, go and study this. I tell parents, don't make that mistake. Don't tell a child, go and study this. Try to influence the child. And, you know, that is where the documentation comes in. Because from there, you can follow the sequence of the child's life to be like, okay, this child will be good at this. You understand? This child will be good in this area. This child will be good in this area. And you see the child is saying, no, I want to go this way. You being the parent, you already know from your studies that, okay, you know, like we say, they can't direct themselves. You need to instruct them. So you begin to, because you have studied the child so well, 
you know that okay you can go this way now just imagine you were not keeping track of this how would you be able to come up with these decisions so it's very important it's very very important to me in the development of a child you need to now there are certain children that actually uh, grow up not uh, based on and have certain mentality, certain mindsets, not on the basis of say uh, upbringing. Uh, I, I think I've met certain uh, teens that actually felt they are not loved by their parents and the, they don't have this sense of belonging. Not because in, in reality the parents do not actually show a certain form of affection towards them but I don't know their definition of love at some point. And uh, so I tend to wonder how best could uh, say parents uh, handle such word because at that point they don't have uh, the sense of belonging neither do they have a sense of fitting in the house uh, even you know things actually happen in the house tend to affect their uh, out outward uh, appearance and the way they tend to relate with persons so how best do you think um, individuals or parents could handle such word okay now you said it's not really maybe because the parents didn't show them affection yes the way they would want them to Say, for example, the parents are good at showing affection with, uh, say, buying of gifts and, you know, uh, ensuring food is on the table. But say, the, probably the kids who actually want them to say the word, I love you, right to their face, maybe sing the lullaby before going to bed and, and all that. Maybe things as that, just an example. Why, why um, explaining something earlier? I made mention of something. Most time, parents focus on food, clothing, shelter health and then neglect the basic which are considered abstract so how but very important correct? very important like i said just imagine i call that my young boy i say come he comes stand there what happened in school today how many people did you talk to do you have friends in school? Do you have this? Okay, you can go back. He goes. You called your young boy. He comes. He says, come and sit here. You hold him. Say, how are you? How was school today? How many people did you talk to? Who are your friends? What differentiates these two guys is the line between here and the lap. As simple as you think it is, it's very important. That distance, that gap between there and this lap is very important. Very important. You know, like I said, it may not exactly be as a result of parents not actually sharing affection, but don't you think at some point it's more like inbuilt for children no, to no, just no, want no, to no, feel no. rejected? No, no, even no, when no, they are no, not. it's not inbuilt. More like self esteem, you know? Uh, no, 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 it's not inbuilt. No, you know, <laughs> look at it. If you are loved, you will know. Right? Okay. Very good. Do you know that some parents or guidance, they actually destroy the self-esteem of the children? For instance, condemning a child instead of correcting the child. A child did something, instead of you to call the child and tell the child what you did. Or this very thing that you just did is not good. Please, next time, don't do it like this. Give the child the implication of doing such okay instead of you instead of you shouting at the child trying to tell the child you know there's a way i used to tell people <laughs> the same word that is used on the street that cause fight is the same word that is used on the street that creates relationship if you ever hear all these uh, guys moving on the street all this stuff if you ever hear them communicate the way they talk to each other Hmm? The way they talk to each other. You are stupid. I see this idiot. That's a friend to a friend. And they laugh. Ha 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 They go. But you that they don't know you. You say you are an idiot. That will turn to fight. It is not about the word idiot. It is about the connection. 
a connection line between the people saying it. I don't have a connection line with you. I have a connection line with him. So, your own, I take it as a compliment. Mm. His own, I take it as an insult. Do you understand? So, the parent must have done something that would trigger. Remember, these guys are growing with fires. Mm. They have fires in them. So, if you do things that triggers the fires, once the fires are activated, you still need to do some things to bring it down. In Ondo here, I had to cancel a particular girl. She's 21. She said, I don't like my father. I said, what is it? She said, my father, my father, my father doesn't love us. I said, oh, what do you mean by us? Say me and my siblings. In fact, I hate my father. I said, okay, explain to me what happened. I was amazed that what this child, this girl told me happened when she was three years old. Okay. She knew nothing about this, but someone instilled it into her, her grandmother. Her mother was supposed to give birth through CS, but because the father did not have money, you know, so the father just believed, you know, all this, uh, I can use my faith. The woman should give birth. Now, in the process, truly she gave birth, but she started bleeding. So the man gave his blood, you know, to, for them to give to the woman but before that process the woman passed on so the mother the, the mother of the lady that's their grandmother now told the children that is their father that killed their mother so these children grew up with this remember they have fires in them she activated the fires to make matters worse she now picked them away from the man they grew up with her you understand? So something must happen. Something must happen that will trigger a fight, that will make a child feel like I am not loved. And that's the responsibility of the parents and the guardian to make these children know that I love you. Okay? To make them know that I love you. Let me just briefly chip this in. Why growing up? You know, because of the way my dad do does things and you know, all that. My elder brother had this feeling that my dad doesn't love him. So he somehow passed it to one of our siblings again. So, but I have a different mentality. I'm like, well, why will he not love me? I just know that my dad just have his way of handling things. So, I know and I was ready to take the discipline and, you know, I got used to it. So, as we grew up, I found out. Now, the reason why I can talk on these things is because I grew up from a home that I experienced some of these things. I can give you first-hand experience, Okay. Now, why grown up? A particular time. It came to a particular time that my dad and my mom were having issues. And then whenever the issue starts, my, uh, you know, my siblings will go supporting uh, this one. You know, this one is supporting this one. This one is supporting this. Then I would just sit down and I'm just looking at them. What are these guys doing? I just keep quiet. I'm just looking at them. So one day my dad brother was angry. He said, look at this one. Whenever people are talking, he would just sit down. He would just be there like a dummy. I was just looking at him. I said, okay, do you want me to talk? He said, yes. I woke up to my dad. I said, who is this woman? He said, it's my wife, your mother. I said, okay. I said, who is this one? Say, my mom said, it's your father. I said, okay. Ask my dad. I said, the day you met this uh, woman, did you see me there? Was I anywhere close? I asked my mom, when you agreed to marry me, did you see me? So why must I be involved in your issues? You have been here for about 30 years. You will stay here and you will continue your matter. And I left the room. You understand? Now, that settled that very matter. And my siblings learned from it. Since then, the issue of supporting this one, supporting this one, this one loved me, this one not loved me, the matter was let to rest. You understand? Things happen before children will begin to feel like that. So some children will suppress the fires, but some, it will trigger it immediately. And then it goes off. Well, time is always a constraint yeah. right here. <laughs> but in few words, what are your last words to uh, the audience, especially the parents out there? Okay. Now, um, every parent and guardian must know 
that children are peculiar treasures given to us by God Almighty to handle, to train them, to nurture them, so as to become useful for God and mankind. To create a better society, we must create a good impression on the child why he or she is growing up, so as to grow up with a feeling of love and not a feeling of hate. That will go a long way in affecting the society we live in. So parents must not look out just for the um, just for the physical needs of their children. They should look out for their social, their psychological, their spiritual, and their emotional needs. It's very important. If we do that, we have a great transition of these children from the toddlers, you know, moving into the, um, the preteens, into the teens, into the youth, and then that way we will have a better society. Thank you so much for coming around this morning. It Thank has you. been very educative. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, uh, to our audience, thank you once again for staying tuned on this um, episode of Daybreak Africa. And definitely, I know you have been educated on how to bring up your kids. I mean, not everybody knows how to go about some of these things, but well, with enlightenment like this, we get better by the day. And this is where we'll be handing you over to our legal station that definitely has a package prepared for you. Please stay tuned while I sign out. I am Angela Daku. And now I know kids are very delicate and should be handled with care. Have a wonderful day today. I remain Ezekiel Ogre. Okay.